What's going on Tamers? It is me, the proud new recruit of the Blue Flare Army, and today we are taking a look at the deck from the BT-10 set. This is the deck that I've had the most fun playing with during my time so far, and it feels very flexible, it feels very true to Blue's core values, which is of course card draw, sword stripping, and then freezing your opponents in place. And you know, there's a ton of ways to build the deck. We'll talk about my build, and then at the end of the video, we'll also talk about a couple of other ways you can customize the deck if you wanna try something different. Anyway, let's get into it. All right, so taking a look here at the deck cam, I'm gonna break this down into three main components. The first are the core cards that we're gonna talk about. Then we're gonna take a look at some of the support cards. And then finally, we're gonna talk about some of the techs. So I wanna first go into the core cards, which are all pretty much released in BT10. The first thing we're gonna have is four copies of Gauss Mom. So he's good for getting out just a little bit of chip damage. Whenever he is destroyed, then you can take a level four blue flare card from your hand and play it in rest position on the board which is really great to accelerate your game plan. So the level fours in this deck are probably the most important cards in here and are actually going to be your engine for getting the W at the end of the day. We're gonna take a look at first the Greymon, Male Bergeron, and Decadoramon individually. On play, he allows you to look at the top four cards of your deck, grab two blue flare cards, and then put the rest at the bottom. And if you have a uh, Christopher Tamer out on the board, you can grab a Metal Greymon from your trash and return it to your hand instead. And then on delete, he allows you to save. Save is really nice because it allows you to swing with impunity with your low level Digimon. And then whenever they would be destroyed, rather than going to the trash, then you can put them up under a tamer for later use. And then finally on Inheritance, if this guy has Blue Flare in his traits and he, your opponent has two Digimon on the board or more, you can unrest this guy on attack once per turn. So our second most important level 4 we're going to be using in the deck is going to be Male Bergeron. On play, if you have a Christopher Tamer on the board, he allows you to pull a Metal Greymon from your trash and add it back to your hand. You can kind of see a, uh, a theme here with the Greymon as well. And then additionally, if you don't have a Christopher Tamer on the board, whenever you play him for five, you can also play Christopher Tamer for free. He has save, much like the Greymon does. And then finally on Inheritance, whenever this guy attacks once per turn, if this Digimon is Blue Flare type and your opponent has two or more Digimon on the board, you can freeze one so that it cannot attack or block to the end of the next turn. And then our last core level four is going to be the Decadoramon. This guy isn't super important for the deck, but he does allow you to cycle through cards a little bit faster. He is kind of a, an expensive play cost, but uh, you get a fantastic reward from actually playing him. You on play, draw one card, and then for every Digimon your opponent has on the board, you can draw an additional card. If your opponent has three Digimon on board, you're gonna draw one for Decadoramon, plus three for your opponents, giving you four card advantage. And then finally, like the other level fours, this guy on delete has save, so you can save him up under a tamer. And then finally, his inheritance on both turns, if your opponent has two or more Digimon on the board, he gets plus 1,000 DP. So now that we've taken a look at some of the tools for the deck, let's take a look at where most of the damage come from and focus on the powerhouses of the deck. The first one is going to be the level five, four copies of Metal Greymon. This guy is Digicrossable by uh, using a Greymon named Digimon and a Metal Bergemon named Digimon. You can reduce his cost by two for each one of those you use, which means that if you have both in your hand or on the field, you can play this card for three. Additionally, he has Material Save 2, which means that whenever he would be deleted, you can take two materials up under him, two sources, and then you can put them up under a tamer for later use. So what makes this guy so potent is the fact that he, on play, gains Rush, which means he can attack the turn he's played immediately. Additionally, if you Digicross to get this guy out, you can choose up to three of your opponent's Digimon who have equal to or less amounts of sources than Metal Greymon does, and you can freeze them, stopping them from attacking or blocking until the end of your opponent's next turn. So while it's perfectly okay for you to get to your Metal Grey Mon and start swinging on your opponent's security immediately, I recommend that you pop up and try to get one of the three copies of the Deck of Grey Mon in your deck. The reason I say that is because he has Armor Perk, so if you swing your opponent checks some big Digimon or some security that would delete the Digimon, then he would allow that uh, Metal Grey Mon to continue swinging. Additionally, when this guy is either played or Digivolved, because he can be Digicross, we'll talk about that in a second, you can take a blue flare card from up under one of your tamers and place it up under him as a source. And then if he has a deck of Greymon in his sources, you can stop one of your opponent's Digimon from attacking or blocking until the end of your opponent's next turn. Keep in mind, he is kind of high on a nine play cost, so you're typically going to be Digivolving from a level five into, into him. So he can Digivolve from Metal Greymon for two. This guy can also be Digicross with, uh, by using the materials of Metal Greymon and Decadoramon. So if you want to go that route, you also can, although it is a bit expensive at five. Each one of those only reduces his play cost by two. And then finally, there's some really cool combos you can do if you can manage to get to your deck of Greymon, and we'll talk a little bit more about those in the deck later. All right, looking at some of the last support cards here, we're going to first take a look at Blazing Memory Boost. You'll notice this is a pretty expensive option at five cost, but I think the effect is actually well worth it. So on play, it allows you to look at the top six cards of your deck, grab two blue flare cards, and then... If you have a Christopher within those cards, you can play the Christopher Tamer down for free. 
So you're getting a ton of value if you can get if you can hit all three of those at the same time. And then additionally on uh, delay, you get memory plus two later on. Keep in mind that there's this really interesting ruling where if you have only two blue flare cards and one of those is a Christopher, you have to unfortunately take the Christopher Tamer and you cannot play it using the effect. So you have to have or hit at least three blue flare cards in order to get the maximum value of this card. And then finally rounding out the core cards, we've got three copies of the Christopher Tamer. You can opt to run four, I like to run three here just because of the way my splits work. But he's a minimum three memory tamer, meaning you're gonna to go to three at the start of every turn no matter how much your opponent gives you. And then additionally, whenever you Digicross one of Digimon, you can rest this guy and take sources from up under him and use them as material for the Digicross. So the game plan for the core cards is fairly straightforward. You're searching for, at minimum, your male Bergeron, your Greymon, and your metal Greymon. Once you have three memory, you can play your metal Greymon by Digicross, and you can freeze up to three of your opponent's Digimon. Additionally, you can attack two times if they have up to two or more Digimon on the board by unresting with the Greymon's effect and then swinging again. And then finally, you can also freeze another Digimon if your opponent has two or more Digimon on the board using the male Bergeron's effect. Very, very powerful. If he dies on a security check, you material save, put these two under a tamer. Like Christopher, he really is made to freeze the opponent's board and just swing over and over and over again while your opponent is left to do nothing. So if you're able to, you also want to try to get to your deck of Greymon so that you can swing without having to worry about him being deleted because of the armor purge effect. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the support for the deck. Uh, what's really nice is that the actual blue flare core cards, it's only about 28 to 32 cards, I believe. So you have a lot of leeway as far as how you want to pad the deck out. And the way that I have decided to go with this deck is to kind of synergize with the Metal Greymon's ability of if your opponent has less than or equal to sources than you, you can freeze them in place. So my support focuses on source stripping. First thing we're going to have here are four copies of Woopamon which is pretty straightforward. If your opponent has a Digimon with no sources, then you can draw one card on attack. So it wouldn't be a source stripping party if we didn't have at least three copies of, of young Tommy here. Tommy allowing you to source strip one of your opponent's Digimon by three whenever he's played, and then whenever you have a hybrid over him and he attacks, you can stop one of your opponent's Digimon from attacking or blocking that doesn't have any sources. Additionally, on top of the Christopher Tamer, another way to get memory is using the Sora and Joe Tamer, of course, allowing you to gain plus two memory if your opponent has a Digimon without sources on the board. And then whenever you would attack with one of your blue Digimon, you can rest these guys and source strip something too. Next up, we've got two copies of Hybrid Chakumon. The deck runs nine Tamers in total, so having a Hybrid, also being able to source strip with this effect is really useful. Just to either close out games or to get that extra source strip you need in order to either get rid of an annoying effect or to freeze them in place with your Metal Greymon. And then rounding out the hybrids, we've got two copies of Blizzamon. I think in English this guy's called Kori Kakumon. Double check me on the translation. I've been pretty bad with him so far. But uh, he did you all from a Tamer for two. And then if he has Tommy and his sources whenever you attack, you can stop one of your opponents to without a source from attacking or blocking to the end of the next turn. And then rounding out our support cards, we've got two copies of Howling Memory Boost, allowing you to source strip one of your opponents Digimon by two. And then additionally, you can stop one of your opponents Digimon without a source from attacking or blocking until the end of their next turn. And then finally, we've got the delay ability of plus two memory on a future turn. So now let's take a look at some of the tech cards for the deck. Uh, this first one, I say tech card, but is pretty much a staple in any blue deck, and that is going to be one copy of Ice Wall. Ice Wall, of course, limited to one, uh, allowing you to gain two memory or your opponent loses two memory whenever they would attack with a Digimon on their turn, and at one cost is fantastic for stalling just that last turn you need in order to get a win. Next up, I've got, for a little bit of disruption, two copies of Modoki Betamon. There are a lot of cards now, especially from the X Antibody series that allow you to gain memory off of either inheritance effects or on Digimon Digivolve effects, and he stops that. He says, hey, if it's not a tamer effect, you can't gain memory. So this next card here is actually in the deck because of its combo potential, and that's going to be two copies of Greymon. So something that's interesting to note is that if you have a metal Greymon in your hand and you want to digicross it, his digicross effect only says Greymon. It doesn't denote what color it has to be. It doesn't denote uh, you know, what its type has to be. It just says, hey, if the name is Greymon, you can use it. And that is exactly what this guy is for. What you can do as a neat little combo is that you can actually digicross your metal Greymon using one of your red Greymons and the male Bergermon here like so, gain the security attack plus one because it has no cost associated with it. You just get it if it's in sources. And then if you can get to your deck of Greymon here, you can digivolve into him. And if you have the Greymon that's blue flare, either in the Christopher source here or in your hand, you can just put it up under the sources here. So now 
your deck Greymon is swinging for two security. And if your opponent has two or more Digimon on the board, you get two swings with it, which is fantastic for ending games very quickly. So there's actually one blue flare card that we haven't talked about yet, and that is going to be the next tech card. It's going to be one copy of Cyber Dordamon. He has a hand effect that allows you to place him up under a blue flare card by paying three costs, and then you can unrest that Digimon. In turns where you have a Christopher up, if you already have the Metal Greymon out or the Deco Greymon out, you can swing, swing again if your opponent has more than two Digimon, and then you can place him up under them, unrest him, and then swing one last time for the turn. Additionally, on Inheritance, he gives your Digimon plus 1,000 DP if your opponent has two or more Digimon on the board. But what you're really looking for are those times where you just need one more swing, you have three memory, and this guy is going to do it for you. And our last two tech cards for the deck are actually going to be options, and that is just for removal. It's going to be the seven cost Plasma Decador to Launcher. If your opponent has two or more Digimon on the board when you play this card, you can actually reduce its play cost by two. And in a lot of cases, that's very easy to get to. And then you can send a level six or higher Digimon back to your opponent's hand. Some people may opt to run Kakaida's Breath, that's fine. But I feel like with the source stripping ability that this deck has, you're really only afraid of level sixes or higher. Level fives, you can pretty much deal with with the deck of Greymon as well as the Metal Greymon. So only level sixes and higher really pose a threat in my opinion. Also keep in mind, if this card is checked in security, you can just send back any Digimon. It doesn't have to be level six or higher. So you do get that Kakaida's Breath ability in some sense, but only if it's checked in security. All right, folks. Well, that's pretty much going to do it for the deck. Uh, I've seen a couple of different variants. So I want to speak a little bit more about those very quickly. The first one is the Magnamon X option. This one actually has seen some moderate success. You tech in a couple options of the X antibody card, and then you tech in a couple of copies of the Magnamon X antibody card as well. That way, once you get to your deck of Greymon, you can either seal your turns off by going into the Magnamon X antibody so that you can infinitely redirect uh, attacks into him if your opponent doesn't have a big enough Digimon, or it just gives you more defense, right? So you have the X antibody, you have your opponent swing, you target him, then it goes to the security stack, which means if they don't have a piercing effect or security attack plus one, then that card just gives you more security at the same time. And then you have, you're left with your deck of Greymon, which also has armor purge. Another option you could go for is uh, the Leopardmon support, which is the BT3 level six card, which allows you to, on Digivolve, take a level four from one of your cards and then play it as a Digimon for free. And then that all your level four Digimon get jamming. So, I mean, that's an option if you want to be, I guess, a bit more aggressive. Haven't seen that top very much, but um, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thought experiment nonetheless. Anyway, folks, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, as always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Be good.